Hey everybody, it's Jack and Dan. <laughs> Jack's taller than me today. Um, we're gonna kind of go over how we do a water change on this kind of tank. A lot of people have said to us, this is a crazy design. How do you even do a water change on that thing? We're gonna show you how today. Um, Jack's gonna take over filming. I'm gonna go over a little bit about the filters and things like that. We'll make this pretty quick actually. There you go, buddy. Um, <laughs> So basically what I have is, I've said I've had fish tanks for a very long time. Even though I've upgraded on the size and the design and different things like that, I've pretty much kept the same filters I've always had. I bought these AquaClear 110s, basically just hang on the back type of filter. I have had them for over 20 years. Um, pretty much when I first started setting up tanks, again, after I graduated college, I got those. They were 75 bucks a piece. I had three of them, one in the middle, one on either end. They each do 100 gallons an hour, 110 gallons an hour. So I used to have those on a um, 125, which basically meant it was being changed three times every hour. When I had them on a bigger tank like this, it was still getting changed about every hour, hour and a half, uh, like, one and a half times per hour basically one of them finally broke after super gluing it over and over over the years so i kept the extra filter and i just basically have two of them now one on either side so this is a 220 these are two 110s so it gets changed exactly one time per hour <laughs> they're like what are you guys doing so what i did is i kept the filters and some of the parts from the other ones these little motors on the bottom of these filters pretty much will last forever what wears out is the tiny little steel rod that holds the motor in place. And honestly, you can order them online for a couple bucks. And so a few times over the year, actually I just ordered about six of them like 10 years ago online. And every few years as they start to wear, I just pop a new one in, pop the old one out. It is simple to do. And again, these are awesome. They're over 20 years old. I spent nearly nothing on them. And the nice part is, is whenever I notice one of the filters getting kind of clogged, since I have an extra one now, I take the other one out, I pop this one in, right in the top, and then I clean the other one, and then I leave this one underneath, and that's pretty much how I do it. I don't really ever schedule a filter change or anything like that. I let it go by how the culture of the tank is going. And if I do notice these pipes here, if you look through the front, if the pipes coming down off the filter get start to get clogged or brown, I could pop those off and I could take a brush to those, clean them in about two minutes and pop them back on. Um, unless it disrupts the flow, I leave it in there because I do feel that a lot of that growth does help with the culture and it does help with the filter. I've been doing it this way, like I said, over 20 years. It's always worked really well. And I've never used charcoal. I've never used anything. I literally just use the sponge and the culture works really well. I rinse it out, I scrub it off, I put it back in, and it works awesome. Everyone's always amazed by the clearness of my tank. They come over, they're like so clear. It's just really, I think people clean too much. I think they use a lot of gimmicks. I need, I've never used any kind of, I don't even check the pH. I just can tell from the behavior of my fish and by the clarity of the water, whether or not it needs changed. I keep up with the filters, I don't overfeed them. And honestly, I think it's really easy. I've had numerous tanks, tons of different kinds of fish over the years. I always keep a lot of plecos to keep the algae growth down. I really hardly ever have to clean the glass or anything. I think if you have a good culture and good fish and a good population, you're gonna have no problems. And this is even with turtles in here. And everybody's like, oh, turtles are dirty. You're gonna have to clean your tank all the time. No, I so very much do not. <laughs> it's really just, you don't overfeed them and you, and you make sure you keep an eye on things. So anyway, I'll check out this rope fish right here. He's kind of digging around through the, they're not out very often. He's digging around through the lava rocks. They kind of dig through there, so cool. But anyway, so that's how I do the filters and clean the filters. Now about once a year or so, I do take the filters off and completely clean them just because gunk starts to build up inside of there that you can't keep up with, which is really not bad. They pop off the back. I put them in the big tub, clean them in the, in the uh, utility room. And it's easy. Um, 
I only do that about once a year. When we do that, we also do the whole tank stripped out. We take this tank off, we take the vacuum out of it, we take it off and everything. But again, that's only about once a year because it doesn't really get dirty because the plecos go up there and clean it. So that's about a once a year endeavor. Usually in the middle of winter when there's like nothing to do, we take it. It takes us about, I don't know, what would you say? Four or five hours to do the whole thing? Yeah, probably. A whole entire like stripped down rearranging thing once a year. So what we do on about a monthly basis is we just do a regular water change. Now a lot of people say to us, they say, how can you do a water change? Show this over here, buddy. How can you do a water change? You got this vacuum. If the water comes below this vacuum top penthouse tank, it's gonna lose its air, it's gonna lose its vacuum, the water's gonna come crashing down, this air then is gonna push up, this tank's gonna, it's gonna be a disaster. Well, guess what? You're right, it will be. Luckily, it's never happened. <laughs> Part of the reason is because we're very careful when we do this. So when we do a water change, we fill the tank all the way to the top, we bring it down just to below this, and then we fill it back up. And by doing that about four or five times is exactly the same thing as doing about a 40 or 50% water change. Okay? So instead of just cutting down half the tank and up, we just do like about four or five of these. It's real simple. You still get the same amount of water changed. You still get rid of some of the baddies. But again, if you're not overfeeding and you're taking good care of your fish and you have a good filter system... <clears throat> And you have a good medium and we've got all this lava rock in here all this bacteria growth very deep tons of bacteria so it's really like we just don't have to do it that often in fact i will sometimes not do a water change for two or three months if the water's looking good and the fish are fine i think the biggest thing is give them a good culture give them heat it's got to be warm a lot of people don't think so but for me where i live what i've experienced is if i don't keep these tanks nice and warm and by warm i mean like I keep them up to 80, 85 degrees. If I don't do that, my fish get ick. They just do. Um, by keeping it warm, they don't get that. So I keep it warm. I keep the water fresh. I do about one to two months. Sometimes I'll stretch it to three if I'm busy. But basically, I'm going to show you how I do this. So bottom line, first what we're going to do is we've got the filters are fine. I don't have to deal with those today. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the air to the aqua cave okay so i'm gonna just i got a little pump down here i'm just gonna turn it off all right now by doing that this is gonna stop filling with fresh air now the reason i'm doing that i think i mentioned it in some of our other videos if you haven't checked out some of our other videos definitely do that now what i have here come out up here on this so you can see what i have here this is how this all works there's a light strip and the tank's basically coming out this is usually here to cover it, make it look a little neater. I take that out. I'm going to take this guy right here, it's a little siphon, and I'm going to put it up into the aqua cave. Okay? Now, the reason I'm going to do that is because I want to get the air out of the aqua cave. If I get the air out of the aqua cave, the plecos will be able to go up inside and clean it, which I mentioned before. So I'm going to just. Suck this out real quick. It's not getting, is it getting in there? Yeah, pretty sure. Getting the air? There it goes. Okay, so, see how going, now the turtles are going to, They'll be kind of ticked off. They're going to be like, what are you doing? We're on our raft. Usually they'll just get off the raft. <laughs> and you can see that air right away is going. Going away. And usually they just kind of hop off. It gets louder too than waterfalls. Usually they just kind of hop off right away. I'll give them a second. I'm going to hold this air. And they'll usually kind of climb off. So they can hold their breath for like an hour. Well, they'll just come out. Yeah, yeah they'll just come out. So they're trying to. <laughs> they're like, dude, we just got up here. So basically by opening this vacuum to the atmosphere, by using a siphon, the water then, the pressure from the tank is going to push the air out of the aqua cave through this tube, okay? By doing so, all the area that's usually exposed to air will be now open to the water. The plecos will go up in there. They will clean all that off. 
usually just within a few hours, turtles do not want to come out. So there, oh, they, there go. they go. There they go. Okay. There's the big one. Let's see if the little one comes out. <laughs> so this will go all the way to the top. Those guys, there they go. See? <laughs> come off the raft. They come out. Okay. So what's going to happen there is, so I'm going to take this back out. The plecos will now go up in there. And that's like, that's like snack time for them. That's going to be, as you can this see. This guy has this huge fin out. Yeah, that's awesome. Come down here and look at the Sockle Cave. You can see there's some algae on the back and the top. These plecos will actually go up in there along with the other fish. And they will clean all of that off. I'll... Usually I could get that a little higher, but that's good enough for now. It's not really that dirty. So now that that's done, I'm going to leave the air pump off. I'm going to let them clean that. We're just going to do regular water changes. Okay. <coughs> so we have one of these Python type of things. It's just a siphon, as you can see, attaches here, goes down. <coughs> This is, um... I like to see the air bubbles go through like a little trap of train. Yeah. <laughs> I think I have two 25-footers. Turn the light on. I have two 25-footers. This comes in our utility room. And all you got to do here is, this is just a little adapter. You take this guy off of your faucet. I got this at the hardware store. Again, I got this about... I can't get it off because I... My hands are wet. There we go. I got this little adapter at the hardware store. Um, again, I got it about 20 years ago when I started using the big thing here. Uh, I think it was a couple bucks. Put that in there. Put your adapter on here. And real easy. The way this works is very simple. You open it. And the water is going to come out of the tank. You close it. The water is going to go into the tank. So I'm just going to get it going, flowing a little bit here. And that water is going to come right out of the fish tank. It's going to go into here. I got a filter. Back. Right now, going back over here. Still going back over here. So here's the thing we used to do at the old house. We didn't have a ranch like this. We had the tank was up on the main floor, and the utility room was all the way down in the basement. This, we used to have a laundry. Remember we had a laundry chute at the old house? No. It was a real old laundry. house and there was like a chute. You could put your laundry down and go down to the laundry room. Maybe. We would actually take this tube, put it down a laundry chute, and still put all the fish water down in the laundry room. We didn't have to use any of the things right here. But since we moved here about eight, nine years ago, we have a laundry room right here on the main floor. So we have more than enough tubing. This tubing will actually reach all the way to Jack's tank uh, in the back of the house. However, Jack's tank is amazing. It has an under gravel filter. We add a little water here and there. We have not done a water change on your tank in... Since I was in fourth grade. Yeah, it's been years. All we do is add water to it. We have such a good culture in that tank and so much awesome growth and everything. We haven't done a water change in that in years. I think it's been four or five years. Maybe third grade, actually. We're gonna be we're gonna be talking about your tank. We're gonna do an update on your tank pretty soon too, in about a month or so. We get some more stuff in there. But anyway, yes, it is possible to not do water changes. It has an under gravel filter. It got, it has a lot of great movement. Here's the turtles. But this tank's just a little too. It's got a lot of big. fish in it. It's got a lot. It's really big. <clears throat> I do like to keep them well fed. People like to see them eat too. So, so again, here's what we're doing. We're gonna let this water come down. It's got down. a lot of crevices too, so it kind of <clears throat> collects it. Yeah. yeah. Basically, I'm going to let this come down to right the edge of that tank there. Okay. When it does, I'm simply going to turn the water the other way. When I do fill it up, you just get some declor stuff, whatever, water conditioning. As it's filling up, I toss a, you know, a couple tablespoons in. Um, that's how I've always done it. I've never had fish react or anything to chlorine or anything like that. I basically just add it slowly pour some of that in while it's going in and like I said I'll do this about four or five times this water will then be crystal clear for another month or two because of the filters. Parent, uh, fish. 
if you look, you can see the kind of output. If you're not at the water stand, you can see the kind of output that those filters give. Look in the back there, buddy. See that waterfall? Yeah. That's those waters. That's that a turtle's is, head over there. It's 110 gallons an hour. So that means this tank gets completely changed every hour, 24 hours a day. So 24 times a day, this water is going through those filters. That's more than enough, in my opinion, because it's clear, it looks great. And I get, like, again, I bought those a long time ago and it's been very cheap to maintain them. Sometimes the fish hop up and go through it like a shield. Yeah, sometimes they, they really like the uh, waterfalls and they'll jump through there. But I, you don't normally see those because I keep the water nice and full so they have a lot of area. Mm -hmm. So here's what we'll do. We'll do this four or five times. Come on down here and see. And <clears throat> if you look at the aqua cave, right now it's just sitting like this. The fish are going to go in there. They're going to pick at the raft. They're going to get to the top. The plecos will actually come out of the water to get that area there that still has a little bit of air in it. They will actually come out. They'll clean it all. Um, and then here's what we'll do. After we get done with the water changes, we'll do this three, four, five times, whatever I kind of feel like today. Um, basically, what we'll do is we'll leave the tube in there because here's what's going to happen. After a few hours when they clean everything up, I'm going to turn the pump back on. The air is going to fill the aqua cave. When it fills the aqua cave with air down to that hole, you can see that hole really good now. Focus in on that hole. That's the hole we drill so that the old air escapes so the turtles can stay in there. Okay. Passage. When, when that fills again with air and pushes down, it's going to add water to the tank. So I leave a couple of inches of air in the tank so that when I do turn the air back on the aqua cave and it pushes that out, it doesn't overflow. Yeah, plus so they can uh, get air. Right. The turtles and the fish. Yeah. Yeah, so they'll come up. They'll just swim around for the next few hours. They'll be fine. They can go for the bamboo is and stuff too. Um, but again, it's really not that difficult of a process. You just want to watch what you're doing. If that air came down below there, it could be pretty devastating. Chances are with the air out of this aqua cave, that if the air did come out of there, even if this emptied out, which would happen instantaneously, even if that happened, it weighs enough where it could hold this down even with an inch or two of air. When, I, when it's more full, it would push it off. So it wouldn't really necessarily do that if I went too far. I've never done it though. <laughs> but, and the 20 gallons of water that's in there would not overflow this tank. So even if that happened with the air out of this aqua cave, it would not be devastating. So, but it's too much of a pain to do all the time. So we just do the small water changes and do a few of them. I hope you found this all enlightening. If you've never tried to experiment with vacuums and aqua caves, we have a couple of videos we've posted on this tank already. Um, it's an awesome idea. I mean, it's really unique. There's no tank that's ever really been done like this that I've ever seen ever. Um, I did send out, you know, this idea to some aquariums and things like that. We're waiting to hear back from them. Also, the guys from Tank, you could see the laser light in here. We talked about that already. We've done things with, with, the, with the lighting system and all that. We have other videos. And also videos, it is quite early in the morning. It's, um, you know, Sunday morning, pretty early. We're, we got up, we, we were cooking, and we, we got a bunch of things to do today. So, um, th we did another video where we show our, how we wake our fish up. So, we get up early around here. So, we don't like to startle them. So, we have another video where we have, like, an alarm clock set up for them through our lighting system. So, that's really cool. This is getting really close to this black thing here. So, I'm going to go turn this water back on the other way. I'll just show you that real quick. Come on back over here. I think they called it python because it looks like a huge snake. What's that? I think they called it python because it looks like a huge snake. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this company. So basically, I'm going to turn the water off. Mm -hmm. It's still going to drain a little bit, not nearly as much. I'm just going to close this. And again, it's called a python. There's many systems like this. And then I'm just going to turn it back on real slow. And it's going to start filling the tank now. I am going to use a little bit of a warmer water just because it is winter time. I don't want to, you know, have the heaters to have to work so hard. So we're come back in here and now there's some water coming out in there. Again, I'm just going to take my little decor stuff and just pour a little bit in, a little splash right by where that water's coming out. And it seems to work fine. 
By the way, all that, if you, if you think that's filth, that actually just a bunch of bubbles. It's bubbles and steam and, and you know, different... Hot water's good for the fish. Yeah. Well, we we it's have all, waters. we have all like PVC piping in this house. It's a little newer house than our older house. Our old house had all old copper lead piping. So we always used cold water because I don't want to get like lead and stuff in the tank. <clears throat> so, um, but this, this house doesn't have that. So that's really nice. Um, if you do have an older house, never put hot water in your fish tank. I would not risk that. I would just use cold. So again, this is going to fill up. It's going to go up to the top and then we're going to take it down a few inches. We're just going to do that a few times. And after doing that, it's going to pretty much be crystal clear for another month or two. Uh, when the when the fish get up in here and clean off that glass and everything, you can tell a bunch of the garamis are already up in there. When the plecos get up in there, especially that big one, he'll clean it in like five minutes all by himself. Garami. This little guy here, here, let me show you this guy. This is always my favorite guy. This little bushy-nosed guy, he's waiting. He'll come down over here and he will get up in there and he will clean that whole raft off. He'll climb up on top of that raft and clean it and everything. It spikes on the fish. So it's, oh, there he goes. He's starting to head down. He usually does it. I actually have a little video of him on the back of one of the turtles finally. It's kind of dark because it got me. I'm going to try to make a whole video of him harassing the turtles because it's kind of funny. Oh, well, he gets on their backs and he cleans well, their he shells. Well, he actually tries to be nice. He tries yeah, to be but nice. they don't like it. They like kick him off and stuff. But it's kind of funny. He's pretty persistent, like I said. So I'll probably be he has to clean. It's like uploading the guy, that pretty soon. It's like the shrimp from Nemo. He has to clean everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So anyway, there's all the guys and... Once we do the water changes, we're just going to do a couple more. And um, there's a big guy there. He's doing good. He's just going to kind of crawl around and see what's up. Once we get all the water changes done, we'll wait till they clean this. And we'll simply turn the, turn the pump back on. The air will come right up there like it always does. Fill this back up. Level this out. So it'll come out of here. It'll fill the aqua cave back up. This will fill back with air to the hole in the back of the tank. And that will cause this to basically push back up because I'm going to leave it down. And again, real simple. It's not a hard thing once you figure out how to do it all. Again, let us know if you like this video. Let us know if you have any kind of comments about any other ideas. I know a lot of people said you should use real plants and stuff. I've kind of gotten away from real plants. The plecos it, seem it, to it eat them a lot. It does cause more allergy and the plecos think that they need to yeah, eat I had, so they just eat it all. I have big pieces of bamboo in here, and the plecos would just eat them, especially the big guys. I would rather have the glass and be able to do the lighting and have the plecos clean it. Plus, if you get the fake plants, then you could have a lot of them. Yeah, kind of like a huge again, we use it up there, and I really like how that looks. It's Don't really like cool. But I I like it like this. And we, we used to use more glass sculptures. We might incorporate some of those. Again, we do change it once in a while. But, you know, let us know how you like it. This has worked very well for me. I've been doing this over 20 years, pretty much the same kind of setup. I've tried some different things. I didn't think that any of them worked really any better. These guys are going up in here. These garamis go up in here a lot. And that one, the one armed pleco that we have, or one fin pleco, he's always up here cleaning this algae, or cleaning the algae off this bamboo, so it stays really clean. Again, I really only have to do a whole disassemble about once a year. It only takes a few hours. And we put it all back together. And um, again, check check it out. Check out some of our other videos. We got stuff about conservation. We got stuff about health and wellness. All kind of good ideas there. Mm -hmm. And it's just one of our hobbies. If you don't have a good hobby, if you don't have things that you enjoy doing, find one, get one. Find something to be passionate about. It's a great stress so reliever. There's something out there to be fun. Yeah, it's a great coping mechanism. Um, it really, it really gives us a great thing to do, especially in the winter time. And we really enjoy giving these guys a fantastic home and we'll be doing updates again. We got to do an update on your tank pretty soon. We're going to be doing that soon. So take care, hit like, subscribe. Bye. And hit the bell for notifications. All right. Later.